inspired by the trembling and delicate soundscapes of Jan Boerman, the Dutch composer, Boren Quaver is an attempt at recreating the alien atmosphere found in his pieces through a generative process that is utilizing aleatorically chosen harmonies based on a set of both diatonic and synthetic scales. The sculpture contains what are essentially four separate voices, one melodic and one rhythmical, and an additional pair that function as harmonic blankets that provide supportive context for the former two voices to reside within. The amplitude values of each of these voices, except for the rhythmical one, are represented by specific colors and propagated from RGB superflux LEDs through light pipes that envelop the structure. Each rhythmical entry is visually indicated by an antenna-like object at the top of the speaker enclosure, and it is the only feature that both maintains a steady pulse and is sequenced, essentially giving it a distinct sense of structure and repetition in an otherwise temporarily volatile soundscape. Jan Boerman himself was working with analog electronic music from the 50s to the late 90s with multi-track tape as his main medium. But in this project I am using the Daisy Seed from Electrosmith, which is a digital microcontroller, so certain means have been employed to emulate the characteristic side effects often heard in old tape recordings, namely mild fluttering in the amplitude and pitch domains as well as a touch of overdrive to replicate preamp distortion. Finally, there is a bit of reverb which I believe is based on an algorithm by Sean Costello of Valhalla DSP, and it might be worth mentioning that the reverb is processed before the overdrive, making the generated audio slightly richer and more compressed as a result. Boerman's pieces, including the ones that are used as references for this work, such as Compositie 1972 and Variant 4, would normally be performed by multi-channel speaker systems in concert halls. Considering the size of my own project, it was really only feasible to use one speaker, which potentially could be problematic given how important the spatial imaging in Boerman's work is. This is compensated for by having a stereo line output at the back with appropriate panning of the audio. One of the things I wanted to explore with this project, at least from a design perspective, was the combination of 3D printed parts and other materials, such as acrylic glass in this case, to essentially dilute the visual impact of the printed aesthetic. While electroplating is something I intend to explore in the future, I find that the filament used in this project, the Prusament Galaxy Black, does a decent job of obscuring the layer lines, and additionally, simple debossed patterns help draw attention away from the imperfections. This project was conceived and completed extremely quickly between two holidays, primarily due to a combination of boredom and a lack of time to initiate a larger project. But I also made a point of not dwelling too long on design decisions, which was both liberating and terrible at the same time. I usually do my due diligence to ensure that the assembly process is actually physically feasible, which it, for a variety of reasons, turned out not to be, but after a few modifications, those mistakes were ironed out. I think that's about all I have to say about this sculpture. Uh, the code is already up on my Patreon page for those of you who are interested in that, and I should also mention that all the background music is produced by the sculpture and recorded directly from the outputs at the back with no effects added in post. Thanks for watching.